All right, dear students, now we are going to revise one of the most important standard of the F7 exam, which is revenue from the contracts with customer and the number of the standard is IFRS 15. The first thing you need to understand is the difference between the income and the revenue because this concept can be tested as part of the objective test question or in the final account adjustment. And we have seen in the past that this concept has been tested both in the objective test question and in the final account adjustments. So income is the inflow of the economic benefit. It can be anything. For example, it can be interest income. It can be the rental income. But when you talk about the revenue, revenue is the income from the ordinary course of business. Income arising in the course of entities, ordinary activities. For example, my business is to sell the cars. So the income from the sale of those cars should be recognized as the revenue in the statement of profit and loss. But for example, if, if I am doing something other than ordinary activities, for example, if I'm helping someone to buy some goods, but I'm keeping the commission, that commission, or for example, if I'm acting as an agent for someone, that agency fee should not be recognized as the revenue. In fact, that is the income. Similarly, the sale from the proceeds of the non-current asset. Similarly, all other incomes like rental income, interest income cannot be recognized as the revenue. But say, for example, if I am the property agent. Now, agency is my ordinary course of business. In that case, the agency fee is the revenue. But other than that, for example, if I am having some commissions, I am acting in as, as an agent, but that is not my ordinary activity, that cannot be classified as the revenue. So in the exam, there may be an adjustment that they have told you that either the proceeds from the sale of the non-current asset or, for example, uh, regarding the agency fee or the commissions, they tell you that these are made part of the revenue, so you have to reverse it from the revenue and you should record that thing as the income rather than the revenue. Now IFRS 15 discuss how to record the revenue. It actually tells you the five step model, which is C-O-P-A-R to record the revenue. In addition to this, it also covers the construction contracts. Although the construction contracts have the same criteria of this five step model but we are going to discuss that thing separately because in the f7 exam you have the mcqs related to the construction contracts so the five step model is c o p a r c stands for there should be a contract between two parties and when you talk about the contract that means there should be a legally binding agreement between two parties the second important point, the second stage or the second step that you need to understand is identifying separate performance obligation within a contract. Now this is a concept that is usually tested in the final account adjustment or in the objective test question as well. Say for example, I am going to buy a car from a car company, say for example Toyota. They will be giving me a car in addition to the car, they will be giving me three year service. Three year service, I can take one annual service and plus say for example, the warranty for some specific parts. Now that means within a contract, there are three performance obligation. The first one is the car. The second one is the three year service. And the third one is actually the warranty. And these three obligations will be satisfied differently. Like for example, they will be immediately giving you the car, but regarding the services, these are the annual services and you cannot get all three year service at once. Obviously it is impossible to get all three year service at once. So that means this performance obligation will be satisfied differently from the car. Even the third one, which is the warranty, will be satisfied differently because you can claim the warranty only if some PCs or some uh, particular components of that asset is not working well. Then you will be able to claim those things. 
if everything is going fine within a certain time frame for example they have given you a one year warranty that within one year if something is happening wrong you can bring that thing to us and we are going to repair it or replace it if one year has passed now there will be no performance obligation related to the warranty so that means the three performance obligation will be satisfied differently you can take another example i am going to buy a mobile phone from a telecommunication company they will be giving me a mobile phone they will be giving me a service which is related to uh, the connection and then they may give me a, for example a portable wi-fi device now i am going to enter in a contract with them but this contract contains three performance obligation three different performance obligations they will be giving me the mobile phone they are also giving me the service which includes the internet and messages call service and then portable wi-fi device now within these within this contract the mobile is the good that will be immediately provided the portable wi-fi device is also the good that will be immediately provided but regarding this service say for example it's a two year service then this service will be provided over the time they cannot give me the two year service at once so the second step is to identify separate performance obligations within a contract and this is something very important we'll be doing an objective test question related to that in a while now the third one is determining the transaction price when you are entering into a contract the contract is going to have a transaction price it may have the fixed consideration it may have the variable consideration it may have the non cash considerations the fourth thing is allocating the transaction price to the performance obligation in a contract now again this is something very important in the step number 2 you have identified different performance obligation like car three year service warranty in the third step you have determined the whole transaction price and that transaction price includes all the components but in the fourth step you are going to split that transaction price to different performance obligation what is the price you are going to allocate to car what is the price you are going to allocate to a three year service and what is the price you are going to allocate to the warranty now the basic principle is the stand alone price we usually allocate the transaction price to different performance obligation based on the stand alone price principle what if the company is only selling the car what if the company is only providing the service what is the value of the car if they are only providing the car in isolation what if only they are providing the service what is the cost of that service so based on the stand alone prices we are going to allocate the transaction price and if there is any discount on the bundle that means overall that will be applied to all the performance obligation in the contract the last thing which is the fifth step is the recognition of the revenue when the performance obligation is satisfied that means the company has done their job now this job either will be done at point in time like for example you looked at the above examples they gave you the mobile immediately that means their performance obligation is satisfied at point in time similarly they have given you the car immediately their performance obligation is satisfied at point in time but the second thing is over the time and again you look at the above example they will be providing you the service over the time they will be giving you the three year service over the time so the revenue related to at point in time should be recorded immediately the revenue related to the services which are yet to be provided is going to be recorded when the performance obligations are satisfied so this is the principle that you need to remember now we'll be talking about the construction contracts and in the construction contract there will be two term used 
one is the output method and the other one is the input method now the construction contracts are the long-term contract like say for example you are entering into a contract to construct a building it may take for example two years or for example you're going to construct a bridge which can take three years or for example you are building a stadium which can take even four years so how the revenue related to those contracts should be recorded if we are recording that revenue immediately even this is the incorrect accounting if we are straight away splitting the revenue over the four years that is again the incorrect accounting because you may not have provided the equal services you may not you may not have done the equal work if you are recording the revenue at the end of the contract even that is not the correct accounting so what is the correct accounting then? The revenue related to construction contracts should be recorded based on the stage of completion. And to determine the stage of completion, to determine the progress, and how much the work entity has done, there are two methods for it. One is the output method. It is also known as the work certified method. And the other one is the input method, which is also known as the cost method. So this is the these are the methods we are going to use for calculating the progress. Now, whenever you are having the construction contract question in the exam, remember, this is even tested in the objective test question and you will be having an, ob uh, an adjustment in the final account question. So these are the steps that you need to know if you are calculating the revenue, profit, loss, the figure related to statement of financial position regarding the construction contracts. So the first step is to calculate whether the contract is generating profit or loss. If the contract is generating loss, loss should be immediately recognized in full, considering the prudence concept. And if there is a profit, it is going to be recognized based on the stage of completion. That means you cannot record the profit immediately, but the loss will be immediately recognized. The second step is to measure the stage of completion either through cost method or work certified method. How much percentage, how much in terms of percentage the work is completed. So there are two methods, input method or the output method. The third step is going to be calculate the revenue, cost of sales and profit to be included in the statement of profit or loss. And this figure will be actually calculated by using the percentage which we have calculated from the step number two. The last thing will be calculate the contract asset and liability and this makes the sense. If you have provided more work and received less payment then that should be recognized as an asset. If you have done less work but have received more payment then this should be recorded as a liability. So now you have the workings right in front of you. Working number one, you have to calculate whether the contract is generating the profit or loss. So how you are going to do it? Take the full price of the contract. Contract revenue means contract price. Then you are going to deduct the cost from it. Cost to date, that means the cost which has been spent till now. And then there will be, for example, further cost to complete these two will be deducted to calculate the profit or the loss. The second step is to determine the stage of completion. So the cost method is cost to date divide by total cost. Like for example, if you have spent 25 cost till now and total is the 100, multiply by 100, that means 25% work has been completed. Or it can be a work certified method Work certified means the work you have done, how much value it is. How much work you have done in terms of the value. Divide by total price, multiply by 100. 
So in the second step, you will be calculating the stage of completion. In the third step, you will be calculating the figures related to the statement of profit or loss, which is revenue. Now what you're going to do is take the price, the total price, multiply by the percentage. And you take the total profit, which have been calculated from step number one, working number one, multiply by the percentage. The cost of sales will be actually a balancing figure. And the working number four, cost to date plus profit to date. Technically, when you add cost plus profit, it gives you revenue to date. And this is the revenue which you have earned. This is the revenue earned, not received. And then you compare it with the payment from the customer. This is actually the received payment. So as I have told you earlier, if you have done less work and you have received more payment, that will be recorded as the liability, contract liability. And if you have done less, uh, more work but you have received less payment, then that should be recognized as an asset. So these are the four steps you need to know if you have the question in the exam related to the construction contracts. So one figure will be recorded in the statement of financial position. One figure related to the revenue and profit will be recorded. Cost of sale will be recorded in the statement of profit or loss. The second step is to determine the stage of completion. And the working number one is to uh, calculate the total contract profit and loss. These are the steps. One, two, three, four. Remember one thing that you have to remember this five-step model which is contract, first one, and this should be in the sequence because you may have an objective test question which asks you to define the sequence. So, so remember this mnemonic or the acronym COPPER. Contract, identifying different performance obligations, and then determining the transaction price, allocation and recognition. Remember in the allocation, we are going to use the principle of the standalone price and any discount will be applied on all the components of the contract. In the recognition, we can only record the revenue regarding which the performance obligation has been satisfied. So either it is going to be at point in time, so you can record the revenue immediately, or over the time, and when you have over the time principle, that means you are yet to provide those services, you are yet to fulfill the obligation, so that cannot be recorded as the revenue. Let me tell you one more thing. Say for example, you have received the revenue in advance. So that will be treated as the deferred income. Income received in advance. So you are going to record that thing as a liability. Just like the principle of the government grant. For example, you have received the cash, debit, cash, credit, liability. And when you perform your obligation, you will de-recognize the liability and you will record that thing as the revenue. So one more thing which is important for the objective test questions is that you need to know the difference between the income and the revenue.